Hi everyone, my name's Owen Brazier. I'm a computing education specialist at the Australian Computing Academy, and this is our webinar series that we've been running every Monday um, afternoons, um, covering the digital technologies curriculum. Um, with me is Kenny. Do you want to introduce yourself, Kenny? Hi, I am Kenny, also uh, an education, a computing education specialist at the Australian Computing Academy. Um, yeah, we're here to talk about algorithms and yeah. what they mean in the context of the curriculum. Yeah, so Kenny and I both have a bit of a background in um, engineering and computer science. So if you do want to, if you do have any questions at all about um, algorithms or computer science concepts or uh, any life advice in general, please uh, raise your hand or ask us in the chat. We also have um, Nicola and Lindsay from the team here uh, helping answer all of your questions as well. Um, and it's great to see so many of you come come along. So thank you, thank you all of you for doing for doing that for coming. Okay, so we're going to talk about algorithms, and algorithms is one of the ten key ideas uh, from the digital technologies curriculum, um, and we'll cover those a little bit later. Um, but this is the sort of a a shorter definition from the curriculum. Uh, algorithms is a precise description of the step, a sequence of steps and decisions needed to solve a problem. And they can often involve um, iterated process. So an algorithm is just a sequence of steps to do something. And the problems um, can be uh, from the curriculum and in life can be very broad. It could be from tying your shoelace to uh, getting getting dressed to going to going to school. Um, all of these are problems and all of these have a, a sequence of steps that um, we do in order to solve them. And so the thing to remember, um, the language in algorithms is often quite broad, um, but it should always relate back to um, the context of a problem that makes sense for you and, and your students as well. And so the type of problems that we talk about will change uh, quite a bit um, throughout the year levels. Um, so we're going to just do our first bit of uh, interactivity. Hopefully it works. Um, either type in the chat or raise your hand if you want to tell us and give us an example of, its, uh, of an algorithm that's used in daily life or you use in, in teaching. Um, okay. I can't hear anything. All right, we've got some great ones coming through. Um, Kenny, I'm gonna fix my audio if you wanna um, yep. take control for All right, so it looks like we've got some examples here. Recipes such as for a pie, brushing your teeth, uh, how to make a cup of tea, uh, tying a shoelace, lots of good examples here. Uh, walking to a classroom, making breakfast, driving to school, making a hot drink, uh, is a number odd or even? Uh, sites, practice instructions, number sentence, choreography. So we've got lots of good examples here. Some of these involve decisions, some of them don't. So for example, uh, our making a cup of tea, we might have different decisions based on how much sugar we want, or maybe we want to choose between tea or coffee. Uh, assessing assignments, that's one that's got a lot of iterative processes, you're repeating things over and over and making decisions. Uh, toast, I assume that's making toast and not just that toast is an algorithm. Okay, uh, is my mic, is my sound a bit better now? Uh, I think so. It, okay, all right, well give us a thumbs up if it's okay. Um, everyone, sorry about that, I did switch microphones, so hopefully it's better. Um, you test it beforehand and then when it goes live, it is uh, not as good, so. Okay, great. Thumbs up from lots of people. Awesome. Um, yeah, so there's lots of algorithms um, that we use um, every day. And all we, we're doing in, in digital technologies is just describing um, those algorithms, um, hopefully um, precisely and in a, in a manner that is unambiguous. So it's, um, it's easy to understand and, and follow. Um, here's where um, algorithms fit in the digital technologies uh, curriculum. This is uh, pictures from our unpacking page. And 
uh, for the first, uh, it's, um, from F to two and then in years three and four, it shares a content description with specification. Um, but then from years five and six onwards, um, it's, it's split up from specification and it's really about um, designing, modifying and following sim simple problems. Um, the intent so behind this is that in from years um, F or I guess if you're in Queensland, I'm not sure, what is the first year in Queensland? It's a reception. It's all no, reception? Or, no, that's South no, Australia. That's South Australia. Prep. Prep. <laughs> that's, that's prep. So from prep to year four, the intent is that you're giving them the problems um, to solve and they're following the algorithms rather than defining their own. Um, in Well, I guess in three, four, they're defining simple problems, but they don't have to uh, figure out the problems themselves until later years. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't have to just describe the algorithm to solve it, they just have to follow it. Yeah. So we're going to go through each of these band levels uh, and give you some activities and ideas that you can use in your classrooms. Yeah, to do each of them. Um, so this is the content description in general. And in general, um, it's the same one repeated twice. The top one is the specification and the part that relates to it is um, bolded, which is simple problems. So most of this is algorithms actually. So they're asked to follow steps, um, describe and represent a sequence of steps and decisions um, needed to solve, a pro solve simple problems. And we'll go through some examples um, of that. Um, but first we're going to... Uh, we're gonna get you to follow this algorithm, yep. which is uh, so click on the view options <laughs> and then click annotate. Yep. Um, so click on the view options and click uh, annotate. Um, um, so I'm just going to um, get the picture up because of my. Um, We can see your screen, Owen. I am aware of this, Kenny. <laughs> um, I, I can do the description if you want. Okay, oh, that would be great. Um, okay, so Kenny is going to describe uh, an algorithm of the thing that you need to draw. And all of you need to pick a box in which you're going to draw it in. Yeah. So if you want to. Uh, when Owen says all, there's not enough boxes for all of you. So. Try and, uh, try and mark a box that you're going to claim, um, and uh, if and then uh, if if there's a mark already, then uh, try and find another one. All right. Lots of people getting their getting their draw on. This is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right. Hope everyone knows their box. I'm going to clear all your drawings. Um, all right. So the first thing that I want you to do is draw a rectangle on the left-hand side of your box that is about twice as high as it is wide. Doesn't have to be a precise rectangle, but some people are doing that, which is great. All right, and then once you've done that one, I want you to do uh, a box on the right-hand side of, the, of your little box that is the same. So you'll have two rectangles, one on either side. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna get you to do, this one's a little trickier. I want you to draw a semicircle between the two boxes. All right, so you notice that some people have drawn different kinds of semicircles because what I said was ambiguous. Now the next thing I want you to do is draw a line uh, between the semicircle. Some of you have already done that. Um, and once you've got that line and the semicircle, I want you to draw another semicircle below the current semicircle that is parallel to that original semicircle.
All right. Uh, now the final step is I want you to draw vertical lines that connect the two semicircles. There should be several of them, so about 10 or so, connecting the two parallel semicircles. Someone's filled in their box. <laughs> it's starting again. <laughs> I believe Zoom lets you to clear, does let you clear your own drawings if you do want to start again. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. We've got lots of different results here. Which of these do you like the best, Owen? Um, uh, I think the blue one, uh, three from the top, one from the left is pretty okay. good. That one's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kenny, let's clear them all and let's see what you were describing. So I'm going to clear them all now. Great work, everyone. Um, tools. And then that's what Kenny was describing. Um, and Lots of, lots of your drawings did not quite look like the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Um, does anyone have any ideas why? Um, in the chat? What was the instruction that, um, that Kenny gave that made it ambiguous? Yeah, so he said draw a semicircle. He didn't say which direction the semicircle needed to be in. Um, so he purposely made the instructions ambiguous so, um, so that, and, and I did draw an under one semicircle first, trying to put you all off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Kenny's instructions uh, were not precise and so the output was not predictable even though he did describe um, the thing that he was he was looking at. Um, the, other, the other thing is I've chosen a very iconic image where you get things slightly wrong it doesn't look quite like the image that you're trying to get. Um, yeah. So part of it is if you want to make instructions for something choosing something that it's easy to make instructions for. Yeah. And um, the type of language that we used um, and the, the way to describe this activity. So if you do this activity with your uh, students in classroom, in, in your classes, uh, um, you can tell them, if because if we said the words, we're drawing the Harbour Bridge, you already had a, had an idea of the thing, of the, what the outcome was going to be. But because we were only describing shapes, um, not having an idea of what the outcome was beforehand um, changes how easy it is to describe something because you're you're all aware of what the Harbour Bridge looks like probably, and so when you already have an image of what what the final output is going to be. Um, so we we are talking about F to two, and this is not specific not a, a problem I would get students from prep or F to two to follow. Um, but here are some examples that they, that they could uh, follow. So drawing something familiar like a face or a house um, and different shapes like a cube maybe. Um, you could see some yes. different examples of types of image that you, can, you could do it uh, at different year levels if you wanted to run uh, this activity. Um, and so when you do describe when you are describing these types of activities the words that you use can often be quite um, ambiguous and um, and if you if it's not quite precise as Kenny uh, demonstrated earlier then um, the meaning the same words can mean very different things um, for example in this uh, newspaper we've got um, police helping a dog bite vic victim on the left but with the same title, we've got some zombie police that are, are helping the dog bite the victim. And so even though the same 
words are being used, the output can mean different things depending on the either the emphasis or the way you, that you say it, or it, it, it's, it's an ambiguous sentence um, with uh, drastically different outcomes. Yeah. So in these early years, it's important to get the kids to understand this because eventually they're going to be teaching algorithms to computers and computers are really pedantic. Yeah. Yeah. Computers or, um, yeah, computers don't have the context that um, someone who's uh, a regular person has. And so, they're actually really dumb and you have to describe things um, precisely. Um, exactly. Um, so I've written up uh, this type of activity. Uh, if you've been to one of our in-person workshops, you probably would have done this um, as well. Um, it's uh, doing this, that same type of description, but involving uh, Lego. Uh, so if, it, if you're in um, the earlier years, so F to two, then you might use Duplo and do some simple um, simple constructions, but um, it, it's actually relevant to all for all year levels. And there's some, uh, if you look at that uh, resource on our website, there's some good uh, uh, discussion on the data representation and the algorithms involved uh, in this activity as well. Okay, so from F to two, we move to uh, years three and four. Um, the uh, specification part is at the top, which is defining simple problems. The algorithms is um, describing and following an algorithm. Um, so uh, the key difference between years three and four, and that's covered a little bit in our uh, curriculum unpacking page that we'll show you a bit later, is that <clears throat> what the students actually do between after two and three to four is pretty much the same, um, but students following an algorithm in, in years three and four, say if they get interrupted, they'd be expected to be able to continue where they, where they, where they were and kind of keep track of, of state, even though that's um, quite hard to describe in a, uh, in a curriculum content description. Um, but the things that they do um, and what's being asked of them from the curriculum's perspective is actually quite similar between after two and, and years three and four. Um, all right. So if you missed it earlier, yep. Yep. you can turn your annotations on because we've got another activity here. Yep. Specifically, go to the next slide, Owen. Yep. Once you've got the annotations up, choose a stamp because they're going to get you to stamp um, some answers. Yep. Yep. Great. Um, so um, here's our problem. We've got um, a description of an algorithm where we have some uh, instructions for our little call it the Wombot um, to move. And these algorithms um, get both carrots. So they're quite long. Um, so the, the task is to put a stamp in the box corresponding with the, the ones that are correct. Um, um, I'll give you a, if it's taking a bit of time, so some of them are, are quite long. Um, I'll give you a, if no one's gotten it in a few seconds, I'll, uh, I'll give you a hint. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well done, well done everyone. Um, so there is actually two correct answers here, option two and option four. Um, one gets the first carrot first, which is option two, and then one, the other option four gets the second carrot first. Um, the hint was gonna be um, the ones that are incorrect, you'll notice quick, pretty quickly if you follow it through. So for example, in option one, um, it ends up, um, if I, up here at the top. Um, and in option two, it's F8, so it drives off the end um, instead of um, stopping before it needs to turn. 
Um, so yeah, so we're following a specific algorithm, and then um, and then and you may you may find it useful to as you follow marking the steps of where you're up to, so you can see um, whether the algorithm is correct or not. Um, and that that could be a, a much easier way to follow because uh, looking at a bunch of random letters, it can be a, a quite difficult, particularly for students to visualize what the outcome is. And I wouldn't give them necessarily instructions like this, I'd probably break them up in, as one instruction per line so they can follow it a bit more clearly and then see where they're up to much more easily. Um, great, well done everyone. Um, so we have, um, we have some Wombot resources and we also have a Wombot DT challenge for years three and four that they, um, uh, that students can do. Um, this is our Wombot. His name is Flatso. Um, it's just like the Bbot except it's the flat version. Um, so you can print it and it's free. Um, and you have to physically move it, unlike the, um, unlike the Bbot. Um, if you do download it, you can, um, uh, print it off, cut it out, and then laminate it, and then use a texter to mark in these little, um, oh, sorry, mark in the little squares um, which direction the Wombot can go. Um, so it is, um, yeah, we, we affectionately call him uh, Flatso, the flat ass Wombot. Um, so you can um, print that off our, off, our, off our website. And there is a, an accompanying um, online challenge which uses the Wombot that you can uh, use as well, aimed for, aimed for those, those year levels. Okay, so as we move to years um, five and six now, um, we design and modify um, algorithms and we add um, iteration, which is just basic looping. And this uh, follows the programming content descriptions uh, very closely. Um, which also introduced looping at the years um, five or six level. So you can definitely relate to the two and teach them both um, in tandem because um, a, a program is a representation um, of an algorithm as well. And the only new concept that is introduced in, the, in this year level is um, iteration and design and modify as well because before, before this week, the students haven't actually been asked to design their own um, algorithms. They're just following in the curriculum. Um, <clears throat> all right, Kenny, I'm going to switch my camera over. Would you mind um, running this activity? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just going to answer this question from Helen. Are nested loops and expected understanding in stage three? Uh, if by stage three you mean five to six, no. Um, it's not until year seven and eight where we talk about nesting. Um, so, but we'll go over that later. Um, all right, so this activity, uh, we want you to uh, figure out some instructions to make Vegemite. So, Owen's going to switch his camera and he's going to show you his Vegemite setup. But what I want uh, you guys to do is either put your hand up in the participants window or write some instructions down in the Zoom group chat and we'll, uh, we'll decide what is the, the one that we like the best and we'll put it as the instructions. All right, so uh, you should be able to see Owen's screen here. Okay, can everyone hear me? So, um, so I have um, everything that we need to um, make a Vegemite sandwich. We've got uh, the Vegemite, um, unlike my boss when he did this activity. We have um, some bread, we've got uh, different butters, and we have a knife. Um, so, uh, Kenny's going to sing out all the instructions needed to, um, create a Vegemite sandwich that you guys are going to give us. Um, yep. it does relate a little bit to specification. Um, so if you wanted to specify problems, um, we, it is good to provide a bit of scope and bound on the problem. So for example, uh, we don't need to invent mining to get the raw minerals um, to get the steel to make the knife. Um, similarly, we don't need to invent agriculture to get to get the wheat to make the bread so that the bread can be here. 
we can assume that all of the things that we need are the things that you see um, on the table. Yep. Um, it looks so. Like, here we go. First instruction, take tab off bread packet and take out two pieces of bread. Oh, that is Lay them on the board. All right, take the tab off it. Might have ripped it a little bit, but that's okay. Um, take two out and place, what was the end of that instruction, Kenny? Uh, place them on the board. Place them on the board, there we go. All right, what have we got for step two? Open the bread, I, I can see, Lindsay. All right, so I've got a bread. We've opened it up. There we go, we've opened the bread. Okay, now put the pieces of bread side by side. Okay, good. All right. Take the knife in one hand and carefully drag it through the butter. All right, carefully drag it through the butter. All right. Kind of careful. All right, got our butter. Yep. And so that's the for... correct amount of butter, by the way. <laughs> um, I have two butters. I have butter and I have this one. This one's a bit softer, so I'm using that. Um, yes, okay, what's next? Spread butter on one piece of bread, edge to edge. Edge to edge, oh. Lisa, you're very good at instructions. All right. Like, did happen to grab the knife by the handle, but uh, it's not too sharp, so it's okay. And the uh, end does work um, pretty well. Approximately four millimeters thick. And that's pretty good. All right, that's, a, that's the right amount of butter. Okay. Um, use Western Star. All right. I'm not. I'm not, not putting two different types of butter on my bread. I think that 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 is a, a form of heresy that I'm not going to commit right now. Um, okay, what's next, Kenny? Uh, open Vegemite. Open Vegemite. Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to smash it on the ground, so I guess... Um, all right, it's open. Uh, I haven't got any instructions for Vegemite yet. Okay. Keep, ve Keep Vegemite down. I think that's the only thing that can be, be meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Vegemite down. Put Vegemite okay. down. Put Keep jar open and... side. Put jar open side up. Oh yeah. Put it yep. like that. Use the knife to scrape out a small amount of Vegemite. Okay, good. Um, Spread Vegemite thinly on bread. Bread, okay. Good. You don't actually need to, you can use the handle to do this as well. All right, I've done that. Okay. So it's, it's mostly a sandwich. Um, one slice of bread does have a bit of a hole in it. So we did open, open the bread up a bit too, literally. But other, other than that, you guys did very, very well. Um, yeah, if you like Vegemite on my hand. I did happen to bring another knife, so I can you do it with the other hand. I'm gonna do a, a thicker slice of Vegemite and then put the two buttered surfaces together. Well, we only buttered one of them, um, but I think some we did miss some instructions to butter the other one. I mean, it might be a bit of a Vegemite weakling and only have one of them, but I would go. All right. All right. Okay. So put your uh, put your hands up or use the yes button in the participants' windows if you've done this activity in your classroom before or something similar. Thanks. Um, thanks, uh, Satna, to closing the Vegemite jar. Um, yes, my mum uh, is not going to be very happy with me. Um, hot chocolate, paper airplane, YouTube video. Um, there's, there's some great, uh, fantastic ideas. And this, um, 
relates to algorithms in lots of different ways. Um, uh, firstly, what, it, what is a Vegemite sandwich? Um, there was a bit of discussion about how much butter and how much Vegemite we put on the sandwich can, can be determined how you define a, a sandwich. Um, what order the instructions were in? Um, could we put the Vegemite on first and then the butter? Um, uh, one of the schools we went to um, were making Vegemite sandwiches for their footy team. Um, and because they were making so many, they got um, a big tub of, um, of, uh, of butter and added the Vegemite to that and made what they called butter and then just used that uh, instead so they could perform some optimizations um, of, the, of their algorithm. Um, and so there's, there's different types of instructions here. Um, and how we represent those, um, if some of you might have seen this video, um, we'll share the slides after the webinar. Um, but if you do, go, if you look on YouTube, um, exact instructions challenge, um, you'll see this video and it's definitely worth um, seven minutes of your time. You can see the anguish of the students, of the kid's face when, um, when he, uh, his instructions had not followed how he, how he wanted them to. Um, strongly recommend uh, doing that. Yeah, and so depending on the year level of your students, you may want to be more or less pedantic, uh, see if they can uh, yeah. uh, stand up to you not opening up the bread <laughs> uh, properly and uh, you know, yeah. looking at different levels of abstraction and, and making that more explicit. Yeah. So you can perform different types of branching. Um, so for example, um, depending on if it's a foreigner, we might do only a little bit of Vegemite. If, um, if we're just um, heap sozzy, we might do a regular amount of Vegemite. I left out that uh, arrow in the middle. And if you're Tom Hanks, you might put um, too much uh, Vegemite on. Um, if you uh, if you want to Google Tom Hanks Vegemite, you'll you'll see you'll see his attempt at making a Vegemite sandwich, um, um, and we can add different conditions to our Vegemite sandwich to to account for more situations. So, for example, um, if someone is lactose intolerant or is vegan, we might choose to use Nuttlex instead of um, butter. Um, so you can account for different types of situations and make a more general solution um, instead of just um, the specific type of Vegemite that, that you like. Um, and also we can make our instructions a bit more general that would be not just um, a Vegemite sandwich, might be any type of sandwich, um, for, for example. Um, and the level of detail that you go into describing each step might change throughout the, the year levels. Um, so for example, here, you might have butter bread, but um, a different, a student might um, do something like this, add some, add some loop condition. Um, right? Is this the bread covered with butter? No, then repeat that step until it is. So there's some exit condition from our, for our loop to keep buttering the bread until it's completely covered. And there's no reason why it needs to be um, necessarily butter. We could uh, do something a little bit more um, general and make a, a variable of like the type of thing we're spreading and it could be butter and it could be Vegemite and then use the same loop over and over again to do um, to, to have a different um, thing that's being put on, in, which, in this case, um, butter or Vegemite. So you could make it um, like that. Um, so um, I've got a question from Helen, which Chris has answered, which is, what do the diamond shapes mean? Um, the diamond shapes basically show that there's a decision there. Those could easily be squares, but it just helps us understand where the decisions are in the flowchart. Yeah. Um, some states have different standards of the types of algorithms that they want their students to use. Uh, for example, in WA, um, they have a specific type of shape for each type of instruction that the kids are expected to remember. Um, we, I, I 
I don't particularly like that. I think as long as it's easy to understand and follow, um, then um, then uh, it's meant to be an informal thing that students can easily make and follow. Um, um, so there's a sort of, uh, is it a, it's like a rectangular prism. What's the one where there's two parallel lines at an angle, Kenny? I don't remember. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, there are there the ones, are types of symbols, Helen. Yeah. Um, the only ones that we use are the circle for the start uh, and end, and the rectangles for instructions and the diamonds for decisions. I think those are the only ones that yeah. we use in general. Yeah, input and output can often be a parallelogram. I would, I, I don't think my, my personal opinion is that you shouldn't make flowcharts too formal, because um, it can be easier to. Um, write the code than it is to remember which type of symbol you need to use for which type of thing if it gets a bit too complicated with too many symbols. Um, yeah. And um, here's an example where using looping and branching should be used together um, as well. So you, you can use the different types of um, iteration and um, branching in the one type of algorithm together. Okay, um, moving on to high school now, unless you're in South Australia, which are you seven is still primary school. Um, but design algorithms represented diagrammatically. Diagram just means flowcharts. Um, and in um, English, English just oh, means, did you have something to say, Kenny? Uh, yeah, flowcharts is an example of a diagram, but we're gonna show another type of diagram that you could use. Um, yep. It doesn't specifically have to be flowcharts. Yeah. But the thing that's introduced in years, years seven and eight, um, we're tracing algorithms to predict the output for a given input and identifying if there is an error or not. Um, um, so Kenny, um, what are we doing? Um, yeah. So here we've got a decision tree uh, where we're gonna decide what kind of animal that we're looking at um, based on some questions that distinguish them from each other. So if you go to the next slide, Owen, um, we're going to look at the, this green tree frog uh, and we're going to try and see if our algorithm can classify it correctly by tracing the algorithm. So um, for some reason I can't annotate the screen at the moment. Uh, I'll, um, there you go. You should be able to now. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to get you to do is use the stamp again and you're going to stamp the correct answer. So we've got a frog here. Does it have fur? Tick or cross? Well, it doesn't have fur. So if you can Stamp there. Does it have feathers? Yes or no? No, it doesn't have feathers. Is it spiky? No. So it looks like we've got down to the frog. So our algorithm works correctly for a frog. So that, that's basically what it takes to trace an algorithm is go through the steps and check that each step is correct. Um, all right, I'm going to clear all your answers because we're going to look at a different animal. Okay, now we've got kookaburra. So has fur? Yes or no? Uh, some people think it has fur, some people doesn't. Uh, it definitely doesn't have fur, but it does have feathers. Can it fly? Yes. Uh, and we get to an eagle. So this is the thing about our algorithm. It works for the an eight animals we've got there, but it doesn't quite work because we didn't consider kookaburra in part of our specification. Um, so this is an error in the sense that our algorithm is not broad enough to cover um, any more types of animals. Um, it's, we're just doing the eight. Okay. Uh, cool. All right, go for the next animal. So the next animal, uh, I'm gonna get you to predict what the answer is gonna be before we trace it. So put a little stamp next to which animal you think it should be. Not the animal that you think the algorithm will do, but what do you think would be a reasonable answer? All right, we've got, could be a frog, could be a puffer fish. Someone thinks that a platypus might be a reasonable answer. Uh, we've got some ticks over near the kangaroo. I'm not sure <laughs> who thought that one. Okay. All right. I'm gonna clear them and then so, take a look. Oh, you don't have, yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, doesn't matter, it's fine. Uh, 
All right, so now let's trace the algorithm and see whether our prediction was correct. So it seems like our algorithm thinks that this cod is actually a fish. Now, based on the specification that it's just meant to classify these eight animals, that's a, you know, we can't expect it to do something sensible for an animal that it's never seen. But if we, we were to change the algorithm specification slightly and say it should do a reasonable job at classifying animals it hasn't seen, what kind of question might you ask instead of is it spiky? Any ideas in the chat so that our fish is not a frog? Does it have scales? Does it have fins? Is it amphibious? Yeah, these are all good types of questions that would distinguish an amphibian from a, a fish in general. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's how you do tracing and predicting output. Um, we've got one more animal here that we're gonna get you to do, which is the echidna. So does it have fur? This one's tricky. Um, it does in fact have fur, uh, which is a little known fact. And it lays eggs as a monotreme. Yeah. Is it spiky? Oh, apparently our algorithm thinks it's a kangaroo. So something's gone wrong here. Does anyone know what might be wrong with our algorithm? Because this seems more wrong than the other ones have seemed. Because we do have an echidna as one of the results. So we've got human error. No, I think you've traced the algorithm properly. But is there something wrong with the algorithm? So do kangaroos and cows lay eggs? Yeah, so we can see that lay eggs there is in fact what has gone wrong. So don't clear the screen, Owen, just, just swap. So in fact, the lay eggs should have been echidna and platypus because they have fur and lay eggs. Um, and the has a pouch distinguishes between the cow and the kangaroo. So now our algorithm is correct. So this is part of what tracing algorithms is about. Uh, looking through and seeing if you get sensible answers for what you're doing. Uh, and sometimes the problem isn't at the end of the algorithm. Sometimes it can be several steps beforehand. Um, and so as someone asked before, when should we be introducing nested decisions and loops and things? Uh, year seven and eight is a great time to do that uh, because you can, once they've got a hang of the idea of using decisions and, and loops, you can start thinking about multiple decisions and what happens when you have those. Yeah, this, so this activity does involve nested decisions. Um, it also uh, connects very well with this uh, science curriculum for years seven and eight using uh, dichotomous keys to make decisions and build a classifier. Um, and also digital technologies and then it follows an algorithm and uses um, nested decisions as well. Um, so we do have a <clears throat> online biology challenge that you can uh, program your own animal classifier and you can also download the cards that displayed um, and there's also a, a write-up of uh, this exact task where you have to get the features of an animal and then uh, classify it. <clears throat> uh, we did write the activity before we designed the cards and so the cards um, we should we should we should probably rewrite that activity to include the cards instead, but um, you can do this activity just by downloading the cards and printing them off from our website. And if you just print them off, if you print them double-sided, it should have the front and the back um, mostly lining up um, as well. Thanks for putting that link in there, Lindsay. Uh, and if we ever end up doing our in-person workshops, um, you'll get to see some of these yeah. and possibly. And Kenny does have a set of cards set of cards there. Um, so we do have those cards with, that we got properly printed. Yep. Okay, um, for years nine and 10 now, um, the content doesn't actually change that much. Um, it's the words of validate algorithm through tracing and test cases. And the thing that we're looking for in years nine and 10 is really uh, testing it properly and uh, making sure that the students understand their edge conditions. Um, that's, uh, that's mainly the only difference. So the complexity increases, but the actual things that they do doesn't actually change that much because we did 
just traced through the algorithm just before and we used a test case to check and that's exactly what we did um, in the last exercise as well. Um, so could you all get a stamp out again and um, uh, the task is to stamp um, inside which box where the condition of watering the gum tree um, is true. So which of the four boxes um, do we water the gum tree? Okay, great. Excellent. I think you uh, all got that correct. Um, well done. So if the moisture is less than 10, and if the temperature is less than 30, then we water the gum tree. Um, in years nine and 10, we definitely want kids to understand um, that if they try 10, is, is that true or not? Um, 10 is not less than 10, so no. Um, so understanding those edge cases um, is important for years nine and 10. So, um, I uh, those so Chris is, Chris has asked in the chat, do we use the terms Boolean operators? Yep. Um, if you look at our curriculum page, we explicit about that. And I think it's good to use the terms that, uh, you know, the terms that professionals will use because those are the things you can Google and they'll help you understand. Okay. So I've on. got one more here. Um, um, so this is the, uh, this is the correct answer. Yeah. Um, um, so you all got that one correct. Um, um, have a go at this one. Um, there may be more than one um, box that is correct. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. And this, this one, uh, Chris, we do use Boolean operators. So there's a few different conditions. Um, yeah, well, well done everyone. I do note that um, in this top left hand corner, there is much fewer stamps than in the, um, the top middle and the bottom left. Um, but it turns out the top left is also correct. Um, and the reason why it's correct, even though it's not explicit in the second instruction, is that um, moisture being five is also moisture less than 10. So it can uh, satisfy the first condition um, as well. Um, because it's, it's less than 30. And if it's less than five, it's also less than 10. And so that one was a bit tricky, but some of you uh, got it did very well. So. Um, this is an example that just doing it and looking at um, the operations is not immediately obvious uh, what the correct answer is. Um, so we use computers to do automated testing um, that tries lots of different values. And if it, we see one that we don't expect, then, um, then it, it prints us the value for us. And then we can look to see if, if it is indeed an error there. Um, so it's a bit harder to predict the output um, without trying um, specific values against each condition and seeing if they're satisfied or not. And, and if any of you have used something like uh, Grok Learning or used our challenges that are on Grok Learning, you'll notice that every time you answer a question, it'll give you a bunch of test cases that it's gone through automatically to check whether you've done the problem correctly. In year nine and 10, we really want them to be thinking about that themselves and thinking about the test cases for problems that they're solving that they've defined. Yeah. Um, so if you've seen um, our social media of this term, uh, we did write a whole bunch of uh, um, unplugged activities for algorithms. And so here are three really good ones. These are designed a bit more for secondary. So if mountain is a board game, um, there's also a logic gate challenge, which covers some of those Boolean operators quite well, um, Chris. And there's also uh, graphs and circuits, which do a uh, shortest path um, around, around a graph and making decisions. So that's, these are a bit more aimed towards a secondary audience. If you wanted to uh, do some of those um, activities, they're all up on our website. So please, um, please use them and, and let, us know, um, let us know what you think. Okay, um, 
So this is a bit of a summary of algorithms throughout the digital technologies curriculum and where each concept is introduced at a specific year level. So in FT2, they're following simple algorithms and representing it with uh, words or images or arrows or drawing something quite simple. Um, sequence of steps and just answering yes, no decisions. Um, in years three and four, we solve slightly more complex problems and represent with diagrams. Um, yes, no decisions, might have comparisons, might have multiple options. In year five and six, we're getting students to actually design their algorithms, um, design their own solutions and introducing iteration and looking at procedural language or just informal descriptions, um, just like writing down a list of instructions like for a recipe or like for our Vegemite sandwich and also representing with flowcharts. Um, in high school, um, we're predicting output and tracing um, and involving nested decisions there. Um, and in nine and 10, we're looking at structured representation. So pseudocode a bit more formally and designing and test more complex and just adding things like Boolean operators. So that's should give you a bit of a clear picture of um, the progression through the school system where everything uh, kind of fits. And hopefully we've given you some activities that you can use in your classroom for all of those um, E levels. Um, so to summarize, we create and follow, modify algorithms every day. Everything that we do is a sequence of uh, steps and decisions. You, you guys are teaching this uh, all the time. Um, you're doing algorithms all the time. And so it's just pro providing a bit more formal language to problem solving as a discipline, but it's something that we do anyway. Um, lots of maths has different algorithms to do a certain order of operations, like uh, adding two fractions might be a, a smiley face algorithm, or spelling might be uh, I before E except after C, except when it's not. Um, that's another example of an algorithm. Um, the language is hard to define succinctly and un unambiguously, um, and so we use digital technologies provides a deep understanding in algorithms across all learning areas, not just not just in digital technologies. Um, do you have anything to add, Kenny? Uh, no, uh, I think we should probably move on to showing the unpack the curriculum page. Yep. Just to okay. um, so on our curriculum unpacking page. Um, hopefully, you can all see my screen here. Um, this has a bit more information about um, what's involved. So to uh, describe the page, the, up the top there is the content description. Um, down below there is the aspects of that content description, which has a definition of each um, element and what the students actually need to do to satisfy that thing. And you can see when I mouse over something, the words in the content description are highlighted as well. So this gives you a bit more um, information about what you actually need to do throughout the curriculum. Say if you're a years five, six teacher, and you don't care about what comes before or after, you just want the whole um, curriculum on a page, you just click years five, six, and this has every content description um, and all of the things that you need to do for the entire uh, year level. So please, um, please uh, use that. Hopefully it, hopefully it is useful to you. Oh, and do you want to show specifically how to get to the algorithms unpack page from the main curriculum page? Okay. Or even from the home page? Yeah. So from the home page, at the top we have unpack the curriculum right at the beginning. And then um, here we've got each key concept. We're going to click on algorithms. And for each individual year level, you just click on F to two unpack or three to four or unpack, depending on which band level that you're interested in. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, please uh, have a look at that and let us know what you think. Um, we have lots of resources uh, on our website as well. Um, and we also have some webinars upcoming. So if you click on this link, cmp.ac slash webinars, which I'll just do. This has the upcoming webinars that we're doing every Monday. So teaching algorithms, that's today. Uh, next week, we've got the Q&A with um, 
the DT authors, the four authors, which is James, Bruce, Anna, and Paula. So if you have any questions or you want to deliver your hate mail in person, then please uh, sign up to that. Um, and on the last week of term, we've got um, assessment, both primary and secondary. So they're running at the same time, but they're, um, they'll be split between different year groups. And so um, Bruce and I are delivering that one. So we've developed our own assessment task um, for secondary and that will show you and talk you through our design process um, if you're interested in how um, what an assessment um, the digital technologies actually might look like and what learning you need to go through to get to that endpoint as well.